How's it going, everybody? So for the next couple weeks, I'm gonna get into some nitty gritty kind of regulatory based topics. I've had requests to cover things like how to get a daylight waiver or how to make your first thousand dollars with a drone. Then I have some topics that I wanna cover like drone insurance where I'm gonna bring in my broker and we're gonna talk about some of the aviation insurance stuff. And then I also wanna cover things like what kinds of drones we use. And I probably have a million other topics. However, before we cover some of those other topics, I wanna cover one of the most common questions that I get asked. And that is, do I need a license to do whatever it is that someone happens to want to do with the drone? So basically what we're going to cover today is the difference between part 101, which is for hobbyists, and part 107, which covers everything else as it relates to drones. So let's fly into it. Let's fly. Are those good catchphrases? It's kind of hard to come up with a good one. Drones are very unique in the world. They're regulated by both the federal and a lot of state governments. When you go down to your local electronics store, think about all the stuff that they have. Pretty much everything in there, you can go in and buy it and use it however you want. And there's not really a whole lot that people are gonna say or do about it because generally it has one purpose that it's intended for and that's what you're gonna use it for. When it comes to drones, you can basically go down there, buy one, take it outside the store, fly it and break a federal law right away. One thing I'm a huge advocate of is education as it relates to drones. From a commercial operator's perspective, I feel like the more people that are, are knowledgeable and are flying under the regulations means there's less chance that people like the FAA are gonna come after us and try to regulate the commercial side of the industry as well. So again, one of the biggest questions I get asked is, for whatever purpose someone wants to fly, do they need to have a certificate under part 107? It's not a license, it's actually a certificate is what they call it. So let's start this conversation out with the major difference between part 101 and part 107. And to be honest, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna pull up the rules for part 101 here. And you can see when you scroll down to part 101.41a, it states that the aircraft has to, be, has to be flown strictly for hobbyist or recreational use. The FAA has been very clear that your intent when you head out to fly is very key when it comes to part 101 versus part 107. Let's say you're out flying your drone for fun and this will qualify under part 101 and you happen to get some amazing video clips while you're out flying. Then you post them on your social media account and a company messages you the next day and says that they would like to either buy the clips from you or use them on their website or something like that. You're okay here to let them do that because your intent when you were out flying was not to get video clips to be sold or used by a business. Your intent was strictly to just have fun and you happen to get some clips. So basically, if you are flying a drone and your purpose is not strictly recreational or hobbyist, even if you're not being paid, it is still considered a part 107 flight. Now there are some other requirements to be legal under part 101 and I will put a link to that down below. However, I'm not gonna go over all those other things today because frankly, they're all gonna be changing soon in, in 2019 since the FAA was mandated by Congress to release new laws for hobbyists that are gonna be more strict. So I don't wanna go through all those since it's gonna change soon anyway. So why does any of this part 101 versus part 107 even matter? So let's run a little scenario. Let's say you have a drone accident, you're flying out as a hobbyist, just doing your thing and you have an accident and your drone crashes and it hits a house. And then those people call the police, the police then get the FAA involved or a whole bunch of authorities are suddenly involved. If you're not following all of the rules under part 101, then you are automatically gonna be lumped into part 107 when the FAA starts their investigation. And the issue there is if you're flying under part 107, there are a whole slew of laws that you could be fined for versus the small amount of laws under part 101. Believe it or not, this has actually happened to people who are out flying and an FAA investigator happens to come by or they've had an incident and it's gone under investigation by the FAA. So this brings us to the next question I get, which is what do I have to do to get a certificate under 107? So the process is not super hard, but it is definitely a little bit involved. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is study. I know most people spend at least two weeks preparing and studying for the test. Unless you have some sort of really strong aviation background, you are not gonna pass the test. There's a whole lot of questions that relate to weather, aviation specific things, stuff like lines at airports and what they mean, things that really don't even apply, but you have to know them. Second, you have to schedule an appointment at an FAA testing center to go take your test. It is not something you can simply take online at home. 
when you go to take the test, there's people there that are making sure you're not bringing things in to cheat and all that. And then you have to pass with a minimum score of 70% on the 60 question test. Once you pass the test, you can register with the pilot's database and then they verify that you actually did pass with a passing grade. Then they also run some background checks on you through TSA and I believe through Homeland Security as well. And then if all is good with that, you'll receive a temporary certificate and then a few months after you get the temporary certificate, you'll receive your actual hard certificate ID from the FAA. So I wanna make sure I shoot straight about one thing as it relates to part 101, part 107, regulations, getting in trouble, all that stuff. To date, there's really not a whole lot of enforcement for the regulations that are out there. Like I said earlier, some people have gotten in trouble for breaking the rules. However, it's been very few and far between. So then that brings up the question, why do you even need to worry about following them? Well, change is definitely on the horizon right now. The FAA is looking at implementing two different things that are going to help them to be able to enforce drone regulations more strictly and really at all, because so far they really haven't been able to enforce them much at all. The first of these things that will be coming is probably the most important, and that's remote ID. So think of this like your car has a license plate, your drone will have a license plate, and not just your registration number, this will actually be something that is broadcast by the drone. And what it'll do is allow anyone that's nearby to be able to see information about the drone using an app or some sort of program where they can click on a drone in the, that's, that's on the map in the air and see information about who owns that and the registration for that drone. Beyond that, this is also expected to actually take flight information and potentially store it at a secure database that the FAA will hold in order to have more information about how drones are being flown and potentially this could lead to them having the ability to regulate drones more strictly. The second thing that will be coming is called UTM or Unmanned Traffic Management and this is probably a little bit farther off than Remote ID and it potentially might strongly be relying on Remote ID to operate so that's why Remote ID is really a big priority right now. So the upside to Remote ID is that the FAA feels this is a really key piece of, of technology to have in place that will allow them to unlock some new things that you really can't do under Part 107 right now. So some things like flight over people and flight beyond line of sight are things that it's going to allow. There's already been a notice of proposed rulemaking that's been put out by the FAA that is basically them saying, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing, but then this has to go to public comment, and then after public comment, they have to go analyze it before they make the final rulemaking. And then they've already stated that that, that that additional rule will not come out until remote ID is in place. I hope this video was helpful in explaining the difference between part 101 for hobbyists and part 107 where you would need a certificate in order to do your flight legally. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And then as I say after every video, I'm really open to, to suggestions on things I should cover or ways I can improve this channel because I'm new to this. I'm not used to being in front of the camera. And then I'm also going to list all my social media accounts down below in the description. Please check those out and stay flying.